Okay, so this is a, a typically Viking helmet. Um, the spectacles. There's a one find in the UK called the Yarm helmet. Um, uh, and evidence for all helmets is really fragmentary, but this is more typical of early Viking age. Um, you then get a sort of spectacle helmet. These are called Spangen helms with the reinforcement bands on. Uh, they have just the nasal for protection, and that gives you enough. Uh, it, it will turn away enough shots, more shots than this, which if, it, if, the, if a shot goes in on the eye, it tends to stay in there, whereas this allows more shots to glance off. Um, they then get to these sort of single piece helmets, so forged rather than being four panels joined together with reinforcement strips. This is raised from single piece of metal um, with the nasal, with the same nasal we see uh, early on. This is, uh, I believe, a Thames helmet. So it doesn't have the reinforcement band, but it is raised out of four separate plates riveted together along the overlap. And these spectacle helms come out right in the Crusades, and they, they continue throughout the Crusades as well. It's an uh, axe and a sword. So, uh, weapons typical in the period. Uh, the most typical weapon is the spear, in fact. Um, uh, spear is really nice and simple. A uh, piece of wood, a bit of metal on the end, and you can keep your enemies far away from you, and that's important. Um, on your side, you would have probably carry something like an axe or a sword again. The axe, nice and cheap to produce, a small piece of metal. Still a skilled piece to produce, but less skillful than a long blade. These were common again uh, among the Vikings, um, uh, because early on at least they don't have access to the same quality of steel. Um, coming out of Germany is the Anglo-Saxons, uh, who, who immigrated to the UK from Germany, um, uh, did. And then finally the sword, the weapon of the true warrior, the king. This is a lot of steel. Um, it's a long, sharp blade. This, in fact, is a, a representation of a single-edged sword, so Viking again. Uh, it would have been cheaper metal along the back with a sharp blade along the front. Balance, the weight of the, the blade is balanced out by the pommel, meaning we can actually move it nice and quickly for quick blows, but most of them would have been big overhead blows coming in and trying to just overpower your enemy. Warfare in the period is not a friendly thing. Um, the sword is probably the equivalent, in fact, of your £500,000 sports car. Um, and then sat outside your £500,000 sports car. Uh, your, your sports car is going to be sat outside your house, your armour. So this is probably the equivalent of a million pound house these days. It's made of thousands, tens of thousands of interlocking links. Some of them are riveted and others are completely solid. And this will... Um, this will stop a cut. Um, give me a second. Uh, this is a sharp knife. I wouldn't run it across my hand. Um, and now it's not a sharp knife either. <laughs> but uh, that's the effect of this. This won't stop a stab, ah. but it will stop glancing blows and it will stop you dying of an infection weeks later. Um, weeks later. Weeks later. <laughs> um, so the main thing you actually want to do is stop yourself being hit at all. So the shield is a principal weapon. You see this stuff about people fighting with two weapons, it's rubbish. If I'm fighting someone with two weapons, I'm going to put them as far away as possible and then just whack them in the head with my sword. And the shield allows me to do that. It also allows me to punch to the face. It allows me a lot of offensive maneuvers as well. Um, now going into battle, I'm going to have my helmet on. Wow, true warrior. No. I'm going to have my shield and I'm going to have my sword. I'm going to take up a stance that allows me, again, to keep my enemy at range. And I'm going to be hitting down for the head. I'm just trying to overpower them and beat them that way. It's not subtle, it's not beautiful, we're not fencing with these weapons. They are for crushing bones, breaking skulls, 
and taking names later. <laughs> <laughs> so we are members of um, a society called Regia Anglorum, which is a, a Latin term, it means kingdoms of the English. And that's how the Anglo-Saxons over a thousand years ago referred to themselves. And we're here um, doing a sort of like taste of visit, uh, just a start or something, because next year we're, we're going to be here in force and have a much bigger event with over 100 people involved. But not here per se, we're going to be down at the riverside in, in the uh, river valley below the town. And uh, we're going to be involved later on today with the carnival, um, carnival procession, just to sort of add, add yet more colour to it and things like that. Yeah, so we're here at this moment just to give people just a little view of uh, what will be here next year in the summer. All these, this sort of food, they're very, so much more modern, obviously, than what they were eating. They were eating, you know, a thousand years ago, this would have been a ginormous strawberry, mm. a truly wild one. Is only about that sort of size, a wild one. But they did have grapes and things like that, which might seem terribly exotic, because occasionally they were making wine here. Well, smaller apples and things like that. Obviously, pears were not necessarily as vast as we have got here, but and whilst it's all relatively high status food, we might not think it, imagine it today, but for them it would have been. On a day-to-day -day basis, food would have been pretty basic. Um, which is, at the end of the day, a kind of porridge, where you're utilizing your grains, and the porridge might have meat with it, um, because it was unlikely to have anything particularly sweet with it, but, you know, and it was just had food added to it every day. It's the same thing, uh, and akin to what we might deem as gruel these days. Um, but obviously if you're somewhere where they can catch fish, there were drying fish and things like that. Um, as, I don't know if they're smoking fish, they could. They, they weren't, they, well, that wasn't beyond them. But certainly drying fish and things like that. Um, making salt cod and things. Oh. 